Hi everyone, Janie here, and today I'm going to share a project with you that I made for Crafter's Castle Challenge, and the link is below to the challenge so you don't miss out, and this month's optional theme is Christmas in July, and it is optional, but I would love to see some Christmas-themed projects entered in our challenge this month, and also our sponsor for the month is Sheepski Designs, and their link is also below in the description box. So, let's head on over to the craft table and let me show you what I made. Usually, I do a tutorial or a process video, but due to a problem I've been having with my shoulder and my arm over the past month, it was just easier for me to work on this just kind of a little at a time instead of trying to record it all at once. So, what I'm going to do is show you my finished project and then I'm going to talk you through everything I did to make it and then also at the end I'm going to show you how I created the background. I started off with a one dollar frame from Michaels and then I painted it with a couple of coats of white acrylic paint and then while it was still wet I used a light blue and just the tip of the brush and put a few streaks on the frame. Let me pull it up here closer so that you can get a better look at that. So there are some little blue streaks there that I'm not sure how well they're showing up on the camera. And then I painted over it again lightly with the white paint. And while that was still wet, I sprinkled some really fine white glitter on it. Um, this one is, hold on a second here, Doodlebug Designs. <laughs> I'm sure you could read that. I couldn't. Okay. And also some Martha Stewart white flocking powder. And I did this to give it a little sparkle and a little snowy texture. So that's what I did with the frame itself. And then the snowflakes those were cut out with a Cricut cartridge called Winter Lace. And the smaller snowflakes, I'm getting closer here, were cut out with a Martha Stewart punch. They're actually from an edge punch, and those are the extra pieces. <laughs> so they're not actually a part of what the punch would normally do. In fact, let me grab that really quick and I'll show you. This is what the punch does. And so those snowflakes were actually the little centers of those that you would normally throw away. But I didn't throw them away, I used them. And I used my Beacon 3-in-1 glue to adhere them on the frame. And let's see, what else have I done here? Oh, well, I can't forget that adorable image. That is from Sheepski Designs. And that is just the cutest little polar bear and its babies. Um, I believe that is called Ice and Cubes. And what I did was when I printed it, I left enough room on both sides. So actually that's eight and a half inches across and I just centered it in the middle of the page. And then I used my scissors and starting on the edge of the page, just kind of cut little snowy waves over to the image on both sides. And then I used, I'll get in here closer, see if you can see that. I used more white cardstock and cut a couple more layers to put on there. So it looks like little snow drifts along the way. And I colored that with um, chalk and colored pencils, kind of giving it some shadows so that the snow looks like it's actually, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Real? <laughs> And I used some liquid glass on the little noses. I don't know if that'll show up good, but I wanted to give it some shine, so I used some liquid glass for that. And also, I put a little bit of the, um, oh, the flocking and the glitter along this as well. I just kind of covered the bear and gave it a quick spray and then with some spray adhesive and then sprinkle that on there so that it also has a little bit of the whole 
snowy sparkle and um, a little flocking. The same thing I did on the frame. So it just came out so cute. Oh, and I forgot I put little rhinestones in the middle of the larger snowflakes. But I just love the way it came out and I glued that to the front of the frame so there's actually a space between the um, the bears and the sky in the background. And I am going to show you how I created that sky using Distress Inks. So I will be right back. So what I used was a piece of white cardstock and normally I use 110 pound cardstock from Staples but this happens to be Doris cardstock and it did not have what weight it was on the packaging. I'm also going to be using chipped sapphire distress ink and faded jeans and milled lavender. And you may have other colors that you want to use. You may not have the colors that I have. So you're going to use what works for you. Whoops. Okay. Let me get this inked up. And I'm going to try to not be really sloppy here. So we're just going to start coming in from the bottom. And kind of going in a, a circular motion. And I'm not, not going edge to edge. I'm just creating a slight curved spot right here. So let me get a little bit more. And I'm not pushing really hard. Let's see, maybe I'll go up a little bit further. You can you can take this curved spot up as high as you want. Okay. And next, I'm going to be using faded jeans. And this time, I'm going to start over here on the edges that I didn't do. And it's okay that it's getting in with the milled lavender because you do want them to blend together. So again, I'm kind of starting off the edge of the page here. Trying really hard to not create lines, but if that happens, it's okay. It could add to the beautiful look of your sky. And next, I'm going to go to Chip Sapphire. And we're just going to do the same thing. And again, they can overlap. You want them to overlap. You're not creating like a straight line of one color. Okay, and now I'm just kind of going over everything with that same thing that has the chip sapphire on it. I'm just 
trying to blend the colors together. Because you don't want any drastic lines separating them. And that is how I created the sky that I used behind that really cute image. And that is how I created this adorable frame. It's actually a picture frame, so I'm going to use it as a home decor piece. Um, whether I'm going to be sitting it like this, you know, maybe on my desk, or whether I'm going to hang it on a wall, I haven't decided yet. But I absolutely love it. I love the cute little bears. Like I said, the link is below so that you can, you know, go pick up this image if you like it because it's just adorable. And let me see if there's anything else I forgot to tell you. Oh, there is one thing that I did. So important things that I need to tell you. Um, on the back of this image, let me move this over here. I put a layer of Mod Podge just to, to make it more, um, more rigid, more firm, so that it wasn't as floppy as just a piece of cardstock. And then um, before I attached um, the snowflakes, I sprayed the whole thing with some matte Krylon acrylic sealer just to protect it all. So it would, you know, protect it from, you know, like the sunlight and, and things like that and make it last longer. So there we go. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. And I hope you like it too. Thank you all for watching today. And I hope you liked my project. And I also hope that you stop by Crafter's Castle and enter your projects in our challenge. It is open to everyone. It is open internationally. It doesn't matter what type of craft you do or what skill level you have, you are welcome to enter our challenge and there is always a prize. And I have the link below, so please stop by. And there's also a link below to Sheepski Designs and you should stop by and see what all they have too. So happy crafting everyone, bye-bye. <laughs>